Today, we're gonna try some plumbing hacks to see if we can show you things that you might can do around the house, but we might also show you they may not be worth trying. That actually did pretty good. It, it's, yes, I, I think it's gonna hold every bit of it. <laughs> but the first thing that we're gonna do, well, we've got some PVC and CPVC here. What we're gonna do is try to seal these off with heat. Say you're a plumber and you're out in the field or you're a homeowner. Maybe you had a line broke out in the yard and you don't have anything around there to actually cut it, clean it, prep it, glue it, do it the way it should be done. All right, so I'm gonna reach down here into my drawer. I'm gonna get my safety glasses out. I'm gonna get my heat gun. And I'm gonna get, well, this is a flat blade screwdriver, but I'm gonna use it like an iron if I need to. Now, I'm also gonna get my pliers. Reason being, if this was copper and I didn't have a copper cap out on the job, I could squeeze this down, clean it up, and actually put a bead of solder on the end of it and seal it shut. And I know it's gonna hold, I've done it many, many times. Let's see what we can get it to do. Now these things do get pretty hot pretty fast, but we're not using an open flame. I've seen this done with a lighter. I've seen it done with a candle. I've seen it done with a torch. I've seen it done with a lot of different things. So I wanna make sure I'm getting a little heat on the inside because I want this PVC to actually stick. And as you can tell, it's starting to get soft here. Now I don't know if this is gonna hold a lot of pressure, or if it's gonna hold any pressure, Well, it definitely looks like it, it burned it, sealed it up together. It's still a little soft down here. Hopefully it got soft enough on the inside to stick. Now, as you see, it's starting to curve a little bit. So we know the plastic got a little soft out here. We'll test this in just a moment, but I wanna give it time to cool down. Now guys, don't get me wrong. This is nothing I would do out in the field, but let's try it on CPVC and see what it does. Now this one actually looks like it may have sealed off a little better. It got down a little tighter here on the end. I wanna see if we have any pressure here. This one leaks. This one does not. So we're gonna go ahead and test these. First thing, I'm gonna get some water. Let's see what happens. Okay, bubbles are not a good thing. Okay, so we know this one leaks. It looks like it's only over on one side. Maybe multiple leaks. Let's try this one. No bubbles, so this is a good thing. Okay, so I've got my little compressor with me. Man, just bumping it, we're already at 20 PSI. And there ain't no leak. Now, I'm gonna bump it again. It's at 35 PSI. So let's see what it'll do. Let's see what it'll do. All right, I gotta tell you guys, we're already up over 50 PSI and this is not leaking. Since this is CPVC and I don't want it to explode and pieces to go everywhere, I'm gonna call it good right there because the last thing I want to do is have it blow up out here. This went up to 50, almost 60 pounds of pressure, and there was no air coming out. So this actually worked really, really well. Now, let's go to the next hack. If you've got plumbing hacks or you've seen some that you'd love to share with us, please post them over on our subreddit, Roger Wakefield Post. We'd love to see your pictures, videos, or hacks that you've tried or used and you think work. Okay, so for the next one, Say you're installing some screws and you don't want to mess up your wood, so you want to create a hole so you can countersink your screws. Well, say you don't have a drill bit with a countersink, but you just happen to have a Dremel with you. I know it doesn't add up, right? But anyway, so I've got some screws here. What we're gonna do is notch them to where you can actually screw them into the wood. They're not really gonna screw them, but they're gonna make a countersink hole so that when you do drill a hole and set your screw in there, 
your screw head goes in without messing up the wood any. Anyway, let's play with it and see what we can do. So what I'm doing is I'm notching the head in three places, then I'm gonna cut the head off. I should be able to use that on the drill motor in order to make a countersink hole to put these screws in. So let's cut it up and see what we can do. All right, so we got it all done. Let's cut the head off of it and then see how we can use it. Now this is hot. I know that. I'm gonna bring this over here and we're gonna see how the countersink works. So we're gonna take it here and you can see the notches. Now don't get me wrong, it doesn't work like a drill bit, but it actually does give you a good countersink there. So if you're wanting to put a screw in, if, if me, if I was want, if this was a nice piece of wood and I was wanting to protect it, I have now created a countersink for my screw head. I could literally take a drill bit, drill right down the middle, and I know I'm not gonna split the wood or anything. Now, if you're a plumber and you've ever had to do a tie-in, we always go knock on the door and tell our customers, please don't use anything. But what if you're in a big office building? Well, they don't always listen. Matter of fact, I know a plumber that got really, really upset one day. He had gone to the office space above and told him, please don't use the restroom. We're doing a tie-in downstairs. As soon as he got everything cut loose and set aside, he's sitting there straddling it so there's nowhere to go. And you could hear through the pipe a toilet above flush. You should have seen the look on his face. What we're gonna do is show you how you can take a balloon, stick it up in there, blow it up, and let it stop the water long enough for you to do what you need to do. It's very simple. See how much that fills it up? And remember, this is just a balloon. Now, to be honest, when I first saw this, I thought, that's crazy. Why wouldn't you use a test ball? Well, say you've got a Santee or something here. You could actually reach inside to a Santee, grab the knot and pull it out. Now you can pop it and actually get this out. But my main question is, how much water will it hold? This is just a balloon. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how much water it'll hold or if it'll even hold at all. So, as you see, we have a standpipe beside us. That actually did pretty good. I know. You were able to push pretty. Yeah, it, it's, I, I think it's going to hold every bit it, of it. It will. Yeah, no, I, I know. Because that's only going to be uh, 10 feet, 5 pounds of pressure. That's good. So as you can see, we got water running in here. Maybe like a condensation from an AC or something like that. But we cut this line because say we needed to tie in another fitting. So what we're gonna do, now I would have a bicycle pump or a compressor or something like that out there, but we're gonna stick this balloon up in here and start filling it up. Now, you can see how much space I've got in here. I'm gonna try to tie the knot. I could actually put glue and primer on here, but as you see, the water is filling up. Now, what's gonna happen is there's gonna get to be enough pressure up here that it eventually tries to push the balloon down. It's actually already starting to. So I may push it up in there a little bit further. Every foot of water above the balloon is gonna be 0.431 PSI pressure. So I could go up to 10 feet before I have four pounds of pressure. This is actually a pretty cool hack. Say that I do wanna glue something on here. Push my balloon up, make sure it's holding good. I've got this already glued in primer. I get this glued in primer, get it put together right where I want it. I push it, I hold it, I let it go. The water's still building up in here, but you know what? I can look down in here and see the balloon. Now, I'm not gonna tell you that I couldn't see a plumber doing this on a job just to pass an inspection. That balloon, look how easy it is to get out. You reach in, you grab the balloon, you pull it over. All I gotta do is take a needle and pop it and I've got a hold of it right there. I can get the whole thing out of here. 
See what I mean? All I've got to do is pop it. I'm going to keep the balloon. All the water is going to go down the drain. Now, see if we can do this without getting wet. <laughs> no. So we've actually shown you three plumbing hacks that I got to tell you worked pretty well today. These are things that depending on what you've got with you, where you're at and what you're doing, could come in handy. If you love this video, you're definitely gonna love the next one.